My name is Francis Ratniex. I'm Professor of Apiculture at the University of Sussex and Head of LASI, the Laboratory of Apiculture and Social Insects. This video is about a project we have just completed in which we compared the attractiveness of garden plants to bees and other pollinating insects. The project was carried out by myself and my PhD student Mihail Garbusov with the help of two Sussex undergraduate students who helped us in the gathering of the data. As everybody knows, bees are not as common as they used to be. What can we do to reverse this trend? And what can the public do? Well, one thing that they can do is to plant flowers in their gardens that are attractive to bees and other pollinating insects. Basically, flowers that provide nectar and pollen that they need. Some lists of suitable plants are available on the internet and elsewhere. In this study, we aimed at putting this advice on a firmer scientific footing by gathering data on the actual numbers of insects visiting the flowers to collect nectar or pollen. We planted a garden on the University of Sussex campus. This garden had 32 varieties of summer flowering plants. Each was planted twice in two beds, each of one metre by one metre. We chose a wide range of plants, including some that we thought would be attractive and some that we thought would not be attractive, to provide a comparison. Our basic method was simple. We repeatedly counted the insects feeding on the flowers to build up a picture of overall attractiveness. We also identified the insects to major categories. Honeybees, bumblebees, other bees, hoverflies, butterflies and moths, and all other insects. We did this for two summers. Bees were the most numerous insects at about 85%. They were mostly honeybees and bumblebees. The next most abundant category were the hoverflies at just under 10%. Butterflies and moths were only 2%. This shows that bees can easily be helped in gardens. Honeybees, for example, will fly up to 10 kilometers to flowers if need be, and bumblebees will fly up to one kilometer or more. So if you plant the flowers, the bees will come. The flowers themselves varied greatly in their attractiveness. The best attracted 100 times as many insects as the worst. So this shows that gardeners can make a difference by choosing the best plants. Different varieties attracted a different mix of insects. For example, honeybees were the most numerous on borage, but borage also attracted bumblebees and some other insects. By contrast, lavender and dahlia attracted many more bumblebees than honeybees. Bowles mauve everlasting wallflower was the most attractive to butterflies, although butterflies were only about a quarter of the insects seen on this plant. Marjoram was probably the most attractive plant of all those that we studied, and it also attracted a very good mix of insects, including honeybees, bumblebees, other types of bees, butterflies, and hoverflies. Lamb's ear attracted one rather unusual bee, the wool carder bee. As well as visiting the flowers, the female bees also collect the hairs on the plant to use in nest building. The male bees guard the patch and chase off other bee species. In two years, the pelagoniums attracted virtually zero insects. One that was attracted was this brimstone butterfly. We compared four dahlia varieties. Open flowered varieties were 10 times more attractive than the pom-pom or cactus varieties. We compared 13 lavender varieties. The hybrid varieties attracted more insects, probably because they were larger and bloom for longer. Lavender is naturally blue in color, but plant breeders have developed other colors, such as white and pink. But the color does not seem to matter. White and pink also attracted insects, just like the blue lavender. Overall, what does this project tell us that is useful in helping flower visiting insects 
in gardens. Perhaps the most important message is that choosing flowers carefully can make a big difference. The best flowers attract 100 times as many insects. Some flowers, such as pelargoniums, attract almost zero insects. Helping bees is also at zero cost. The bee and insect friendly flowers we studied cost no more to buy. They are just as easy to grow and just as pretty to look at in your garden. So helping bees and other pollinators in your garden is really a win-win situation. To help bees and other pollinators in your garden, the flowers do not have to be native British wildflowers. Nectar is basically sugar and water, and it does not really matter if this is from a plant that is British, from the Mediterranean, such as lavender, or even from Mexico, such as dahlias. There are literally thousands of different plant varieties available to plant in your garden. This study was not an attempt to compare all of them. It would have been impossible to do so. But gardeners can compare different varieties in their own gardens, or even in garden centres when they're thinking of buying a flower. Just have a look before you buy. Does it have bees on it? If it does, well, it's probably a good plant. But here are some varieties from the 32 that we studied that we can fully recommend. They all flower in the summer. They're all easy to grow, cheap and very attractive. And they will bring in bees and butterflies and hoverflies into your garden. This project is part of the Sussex Plan for Honeybee Health and Wellbeing, a project with many different sub-projects that we've been doing for several years in the Laboratory of Apiculture and Social Insects. We're doing our best to try and help bees and other insects, and this is just one way that we're doing it. We would like to say thank you to the Body Shop Foundation who provided the funding that enabled Mihail Garbasov to do his PhD.